Yes, so this summer you worked with Mary Wilson on Puppets, Paul and Mary for our children's programming. Yes. In the outdoor theater. And Mary Wilson has uh, been a part of our, um, you know, theater for a very long time. But this summer we were so lucky that you joined us. And um, I'd love you to talk about that a little bit and how you got involved. Yeah, uh, well, we had, Mary and I had a mutual, have a mutual friend who um, put us together. And uh, so we met back in the winter uh, and just sat down and just talked and connected right away. So it was a really good working relationship of just sharing ideas and ideas of how to incorporate music with the puppet program. And um, this was before, the world changed in March. This was back in January. So we had all kinds of plans of what we're going to do to, um, to design some kind of programming. And then, uh, so we'd meet together. We got together the first time she brought her puppets over and we just said, let's just play and let's just see what happens. <laughs> and so she uh, brought a bucket of puppets to my house and we, uh, I got the guitar and we just started talking to the puppets. And the amazing thing, I, I, maybe it's because I've taught second grade for so long, um that talking to the puppets was very easy it was just <laughs> i didn't see mary anymore mary just kind of disappeared and the the very vibrant personalities of her puppets just came through there you know and there's so many of them um so we just found a great uh connection and just thinking of a song and then some kind of a uh theme to the song and having a conversation uh, having grown up with Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, and being a big fan of, I think the world needs more Fred nowadays. Yeah. Um, it was really exciting to have that kind of uh, experience of learning how to communicate with the puppets and um, and share the music with them. And uh, so then March came and was like, what are we going to do? Um, and then she had spoken with... Um, the, the Cape Rep and and uh, and Mo and Janine uh, had this idea of doing continuing the summer theater, but just doing it as a live performance um, for for the YouTube and for the Cape Rep channel. And uh, so we formed together, came up with some themes, and and came up with seven shows, and uh, it was a blast. It was really really fun. Well, we were so again so lucky to have both of you, and I'm so glad that we were able to continue a form of programming, especially yes, for kids. Absolutely. Um, and it just I love that you were a part of it this year because it, you know, I love Marion and her puppets. Um, but it was so great to have music with it. Um so depending on the topic of your show, did you come up with like the original piece of the music? Like, was that all original music that you can- uh, uh, Some of the, I've been working on more original pieces of my own. I was, uh, you know, it, it's funny. I, I worked for a while with Peter, Paul and Mary as their website uh, moderator and archivist. And so it was just, Mary had the idea. It's like, she's really Mary, I'm really Paul. And puppets, Paul and Mary just had that euphonic kind of sound. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's it. Um, so we, yeah, we developed themes, and then, uh, and then I, I've uh, found some some, some uh, songs that are in my repertoire in any way that I've been using in the classroom for years, and uh, and then kind of blended in some of my original pieces to a few of the shows, and um, so we'd meet early in the week and kind of plan out a theme, and then try to figure out the songs and the dialogue and which puppet would go best with each scenario, and design seven roughly thirty-minute shows. So. Um, so it was exciting to be able to present some of my original songs into the uh, into the mix. Um, one of them being uh, a song called "Learning Remote." Mm. That I wrote uh, back back in March, April, May, and June when we were doing the remote teaching. I just I felt like it seemed like teachers and students were spending so much time staring at a screen, and I thought I think there's more to remote learning than screen time. And so yeah. I tried to think of other activities that you could do with the freedom of being home, uh, whether it be learn a new skill, like tie your shoe, do laundry, learn how to cook, explore nature, look at the sky, plant something, any of these activities that could be um, utilized as educational. And so I uh, came up with a song called Learning Remote that kind of goes to different scenarios of using cooking to teach math and science and sequencing, fractions and geometry, um, you know, exploring nature and utilizing nature trails around Cape Cod, um, 
And, uh, and so we did make a video uh, early on with the puppets acting out the scenes in that song separately. But then we also included an episode where that song was included as well. So. That's so, it was great. I remember that song specifically. It was great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were both able to join us for this November project, which moved you in, I believe you were inside, right? Yeah, we taped in, at the indoor theater, yes. Um, I don't want I, to give anything away, but if you can talk a little bit about, um, did you do a different, where the, the puppets were involved, yes? The puppets were involved, <laughs> but on a more, on a more adult level. Oh, um, yes, so I was wondering if it was more of like an adult... I mean, not, you know. Yes. Extreme. Well, we took a song, one of the songs, <laughs> one of the songs that we did, uh, it was a song that we did in the context of the Puppets Polymeri program, but we changed the lyrics into a more of a, you know, this more timely in the yeah. adult world uh, that we're in right now. Um, and so there's a group that I've worked with in Texas called um, Kid Links, and they do music for um, children in long-term care and hospitals. And so I've been um, kind of there East Coast ambassador and, and working with them, uh, you know, slowly getting involved more in their uh, their work and which is prompting me to write some more of my own material. But uh, you know, so we used one of their songs in the Puppets Fall and Mary, but also uh, rewrote it for the um, November project. That's great. And it's, um, so how did it feel to um, take just performing inside the theater and, and to be able to continue to be artistic and creative during this time, mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious how that felt to kind of, and with the lights and the set. Yeah, and well, this, I mean, I don't really, I mean, the set was awesome. The, the, yeah. the set design was really cool. Um, and so, yeah, in the summer, you know, performing outside on a summer day, we, we'd tape around nine in the morning, you know, to the empty benches. And of course, Mo was the camera person and, uh, or Janine, they'd, they'd take turns, but they were kind of prompting us to, like, you know, when we needed more volume or... You're competing uh, with airplanes and birds. Oh, there's one episode where there's a very loud airplane going, <laughs> going very slowly, by the way. It's like, it went on forever. I'm like, when is that playing? And I cross over. Um, and uh, so the, on the first taping, though, it was funny, because on the website, it said there were no live performances. And yet... Um, a fa one family came through that didn't, they were from off Cape and they came wandering onto the, into the theater, outdoor theater. And so um, they, how could you say no? So they sat up in the back and, and we're our first audience. So oh, that that's was the so only audience we played to. <laughs> um, but every other show was to the empty seats. Uh, so going into the indoor theater, uh, you know, it was just spotlight. So you're singing. So it was kind of like, I was able to picture in my mind that there was a room full of yeah. uh, uh, an audience and uh, that the lighting was really cool. And just to be able to play with some of those theatrics of the set design and the lighting was uh, you know, really, really nice. Uh, so we did two songs together um, and then one I did a solo uh, performance by myself. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. A rewrite of a, of a pop song that I don't, I don't know how much you should be giving away during this little interview. Oh, it's really up to you. But, you okay. know, I've been asking artists just, you know, what drove them to do. So I'd be curious when you did your solo work, just mm -hmm. um, so the song was familiar for you and, you know. Um, yeah, I did a rewrite or not a rewrite, but well, a couple little word changes, but the uh, Philip Phillips songs home. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, yes, uh, yes. We're gonna yes. make this place. And I, uh, a few years ago, I slowed it down to more of a, a, a slow pace, took the speed down and did it as a performance in the context of the school performance of using the song as a way of welcoming a new student that comes mid-year into the school year and has that awful, yeah. you know, I don't know anybody, I don't know where I am, I don't know what to do. And we did a school performance in a skit with that song as the, um, as the backdrop to the skit. Oh, that's great. And, uh, and uh, so, and I performed it a few times at some open mics. Um, I do the, uh, sometimes David Roth has a open mic that he does. Um, there's an open mic at the Muse uh, up in P-Town. So I've, I've performed the song with uh, Dinah Mellon a few times. She went with her fiddle. And um, so I, 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 and I thought, you know, the theater is a place we're all missing right now. And so we're trying to make this place 
your home. And so I thought it was an appropriate song to kind of use in the context of all these artists coming together to say, we're still here, we're still performing, and we're glad you're joining us for the November project. Oh, so I kind of envisioned in my head, you know, home in this case was uh, Cape Rep Theater. Oh, that's lovely. Um, and I guess my final question is just if there's anything, I mean, I, um, I believe you mentioned you've been writing a little bit more during this time. Mm -hmm. Has there been anything else that you've picked up or just kind of examined for yourself during this, all this time that we have? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, like, it's funny. It's been changes. It's been a roller coaster of a year you know, with, you know, you know, some things on the low side and then on the upside. I, I, I taught second grade for many years in, in Brewster and then I, uh, I had an opportunity to switch and leave that and become a homeschool teacher for a family here in town um, with, with, with two students and to be able to take with a little more freedom to bring that creativity back and the, the joy of learning. So I've, I, I've been uh, really enjoying the school year when I know right now it's a, a challenge for a lot of my fellow educators. Um, so there's been a whole new learning curve going on on how to uh, activate the curriculum with experiential learning and, and ways to incorporate art. You know, we did an Eric Carl painting project today uh, in relation to um, writing thank you notes for a whale watch that we went on last week. And, um, and just so, yeah, there's, so, I, so I guess what I'm doing is just trying to find that quiet time to think of themes and things to, that could become songs a lot of the songs I do are kind of in the theme of social and emotional learning mm -hmm. and social skills and life skills uh, for kids and putting them into, you know, story, funny story situations where they can make the connection. Um, so that's been going on. And then I know one of your, I know in your email, you'd asked about kind of some of the guilty pleasures of things. Yes, <laughs> please give it to me. Yeah. I don't know if it's that interesting, okay. but I'll take it. I, I have found that it's been nice to uh, kind of, uh, take a step and I haven't cooked as much because I wanted to support a lot of the restaurants yes. on the Cape and my favorite places that I enjoy going. So, um, so I've, I've been very happy to <laughs> do curbside pick out more often than I would care to admit, but, uh, uh, but so many places that I've been wanting to support. Uh, and, and the nice thing is sometimes it's, I, you know, I live in Brewster, so it's, uh, if it's time to make a phone call, I can have a half hour chat with somebody and drive up to Wellfleet, Truro, Provincetown and go to one of the restaurants that I like to frequent and have plenty of time to catch up with someone on the phone going up and have another conversation on the way down. And just all that quarantine time, you know, it was like, it was nice to get out and just take a drive and just see, yeah. see people and or just nature or, or the sky or just to get out of the house a little bit. So that's been, one thing I've been doing quite a bit. That's good. Um, That's great. Yeah.